Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, this is lecture 36 of basic calculus 1. In the last lectures, we were discussing how to compute the volume of a solid of revolution. So, today we will be talking about uh, the surface area of such a solid. So, here the assumption is our solid is generated by revolving some region uh, in the plane around y or x axis. So, now you see if you are interested only in the surface of revolution, we do not really need the whole solid, we need only its surface. So, you may think of like there is a curve given in the plane and that uh, is being revolved around some axis, x axis or y axis and we want to find the uh, area of that surface. Okay. So, let us look at how it goes. So, suppose we have a smooth curve which is given by a function y equal to f x and f of x is greater than or equal to 0 that is it is lying on the uh, say top half plane and where x varies from a to b. So, that is how the curve is defined. So, now this curve is revolved about the x axis let us take x axis case first it is revolved around the x axis. So, you get a solid it is not really full solid it is a hollow one. Anyway, even if you take this region and revolve around x axis you would get the solid, but we are interested only in the surface. So, we just take that the curve is revolved around the x axis. So, this hollow solid it has a surface we want to compute the area of this surface. So, now as earlier we will be dividing this interval a to b into smaller portions and in each of the smaller portions we will try to approximate the surface area which is painted a light blue color here. We want to approximate that and then take the sum of all such uh, small bands to get our surface area of the surface. Okay. So, that means we take a partition and this interval a to b is divided into say n sub intervals may not be of uniform length some sub intervals by choosing some points x 0, x 1 up to x n where x 0 is a and x n equal to b as usual for our partitions. Now, in each of the sub intervals a band is generated. So, you want to find that surface. So, let us write this length of the sub interval as delta x i which is x i minus x i minus 1. Now, as earlier we will say the norm of the partition is maximum of this delta x i and we want to take the sum and let us take the limit when this maximum of delta x i goes to 0 that would give us the area of the surface. So, in between we have to see what exactly is the area of this band. Now, the band looks something like a frustrum. In the second picture, you see it looks like a frustrum, right. Frustrum means a part of the cone with its base and top one is uh, cut. So, how to get the area of this uh, uh, surface, which is the frustrum here? So, you imagine uh, it is extending it, you get a cone, so which is in the third picture, and this surface area which is painted blue we want to uh, approximate it. Okay. So, how do we approximate that uh, one? It is the first term of a right circular cone that is what we think. So, as you know the 
surface area of the cone will be pi r times l where l is the slant height this height will be l. So, if that is your l and r is the radius of the base then it will be surface of the cone will be having the area as pi r l. So, using that we will compute this area of the uh, frustrum. So, for the frustrum what we do? We take the full area of the cone and then subtract that one which is white here. So, subtract from this full area this portion of the white portion of the uh, cone. So, if that is small l this is capital L minus l it will be pi r, but this r also will change r will be the top one now. Okay, let us find it out. So, area of the frustrum will be pi r 2 times let us look at the picture. Here we have the, the total thing say is L. So, we have L 1 is the white one corresponding to that and then this total will be pi r times L or we may say if L is only this much this is the length then it will be L plus L 1. Okay? We have one r 2 here one r 1 there. So, then it will be pi r 2 times L 1 plus L which is the bigger cone surface area minus pi r 1 times small L 1 right L 1 that gives the top one. So, we subtract them and that turns out to be pi times r 1 minus r 2 L 1 plus r 2 L right. So, it is r 2 uh, you take L 1 common so it is r 2 minus r 1 right it is r 2 minus r 1 times L 1 plus r 2 times L that is how it looks. Okay. We will we'll have we will have r 1 we have r 2 we have L 1 we have L. So, you should be able to express in terms of r 1 r 2 and L. So, for that we go back to the picture and look at the two triangles there. So, one is the smaller one this and the another is the bigger one that triangle. So, they are similar triangles therefore, we can say r 1 divided by r 2 will be equal to l 1 divided by l 1 plus l or we write in terms of the r 1 l 2 uh, and l 1 l 2 this way l 1 divided by r 1 will be l 1 plus l divided by r 2. Okay. So, with this r 1 r 2 relation we find that r 2 l 1 if you multiply that r 2 l 1 equal to r 1 times l 1 plus uh, r 1 times l it is r 1 times l. So, now from this you get r 2 minus r 1 times l 1 taking this one to the left side equal to r 1 times l. So, this is the relation we get between l 1 l and r 1 r 2. So, using that in our formula that the area is first term area is pi into r 1 minus r 2 minus r 1 into l 1 plus r 2 l we would get pi times r 1 l r 2 minus r 1 l 1 is r 1 l. So, pi times r 1 l plus r 2 l that gives uh, so, r 1 plus r 2 divided by 2 let us write it as r it is the average of those two ready and the top smaller one and the bigger one is r 2. So, it is their average and 2 pi that average times l that is how the area of the first term we obtain. So, now we have to sum all these areas taking the uh, sub intervals x i minus so to x i and take the sum over all these to have an approximation of the area of the first term. So, now for the sub interval x i minus, minus 1 to x i the slant height which is your L here. So, that is now approximated by square root of delta x i square plus delta y i square fine. if you look at the picture again let us look at that why it is coming that way. So, here uh, we want to approximate this L and this 
L plus L1. So, that is coming from this square plus this plus square this square root. So, in our uh, xi minus 1 to xi, this will give xi minus xi square which is delta xi square plus delta yy square. So, that is how we obtain uh, the formula here which is the slant height is approximated by delta xi square plus delta y n square to square root. Okay. Then we plug that in our formula for A which is 2 pi R L. So, R equal to R 1 plus R 2 which are the now the ready of the bigger one the smaller one cones. So, it is f of x i plus f of x i minus 1 divided by 2 that is our R. Therefore, this A i which is corresponding to the first term uh, for the sub interval x i minus 1 to x i is let us call it a i that is 2 pi into r which is f of x i minus 1 plus f of x i by 2 and l which is square root of delta x i square plus delta y i square. So, as we have set our uh, uh, our approximation to the uh, whole area will be summation of these a i's, but before that let us have some simplification of this anyway there is an approximation. So, we use mean value theorem here because we assume that f of x is smooth. So, that differentiable then we can use the mean value theorem to say that f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 equal to f prime at some point c i in between x i minus 1 to x i times x i minus x i minus 1 which is same thing as f prime c i times delta x i. So, with this one delta y i equal to f prime c i times delta x i. So, this c i is in between uh, x i minus 1 to x i. So, with this now delta x i square plus delta y i square will be equal to delta x i is here delta x i square into 1 plus f prime c i square and we want it square root. So, it is 1 plus f prime c i square times delta x i. So, once this is obtained our a i was 2 pi into r which is f of x i minus 1 plus f x i by 2 times delta x i square plus delta y i square we now replace it by square root of 1 plus f prime c i square. So, this is how the sum of all the approximated uh, areas look like. Okay. So, now when the limit of the norm of the partition which is maximum i delta x i approaches 0 we obtain the surface of revolution or area of the surface of revolution. Now, what will happen to when we take the limit your once maximum of x i delta x i goes to 0 you see that the c i also goes to either x i or x i plus 1 they are now same. So, what do we get in the limit it will be 1 plus f prime let us say x square and then it will be integral for d x and this one will become y height y. So, we get 2 pi f of x square root of 1 plus f prime x square d x that will be the definition of surface area of revolution for us. So, this also we can write 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y prime square d x where x is varying from a to b. So, this is the limits for x a and b are the limits for x. Now, all these things happen when you have the curve given as y equal to f of x and it is assumed that f of x is greater than or equal to 0 and then of course, we assume that the curve does not intersect itself. So, that you will not get the surface area if it intersects. So, it is non intersecting and it is traversed only once when you go from x varies from a to b. Then this curve is revolved about x axis and in that case our area is a to b 2 pi y. So, when it is revolving around x axis we have integration with respect to x, but this factor is y because that is your corresponding to r in the first term. So, 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. So, here there is a common mistake why do we think of square root of 1 plus y prime square instead if you take 2 pi y and it is just x 
but it is not so because you are taking really the length over this curve we are approximating that x i minus 1 to x i minus 1 the length of the curve is approximated by a straight line here. So, that is really d s not d x not d y right. So, that is why this factor 1 plus y prime square is coming up ok. So, now if you write that as d s as we know d s equal to square root of 1 plus f prime x square d x the differential form you can express the area as a to b 2 pi y d s it is not d x it is d s where the limits for integration are for x which is a to b not for s. So, that means we have we think of d s as a s is a function of x and the limits are for a uh, x which varies from a to b. So, that will be our formula for computation of area of surface of uh, revolution. Now, suppose instead of x axis the same curve is revolved about y axis. So, in that case we express the function as x as a function of y and say y varies from uh, c to d. So, that the same curve is expressed as x equal to g of y where y varies from c to d. Again we assume that this uh, g of y is greater than or equal to 0. So, that the whole curve is in first quadrant right. If you look at it x direction it is greater than or equal to 0 in y also it is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the surface area will be 2 pi times same g y just like your y here you will be taking x now x equal to g of y and d s which becomes now 1 plus g prime y square d y. So, that is the way we can think integral says c to d not a to b it is c to d 2 pi x square root of 1 prime 1 plus x prime square d y where y varies from c to d. Look at our assumptions we say that y equal to f of x is revolved about x axis with f x greater than or equal to 0 ok and x lies between a to b. So, that you get the arc of the curve. Similarly, if you take f x less than or equal to 0 then to satisfy the assumption we will work with y which is y equal to minus f of x then that would give rise to uh, area of the surface of revolution. If both the things happen say in some sub interval a to c it is less than or equal to 0 from c to b is greater than or equal to 0 then we may have to compute both of them separately and then add them off fine to get the total area of uh, surface of revolution ok. So, now let us see an example. Say in this example, we have a curve which is y equal to 2 root x, and we are taking an arc of this curve which is defined by varying x between 1 and 2. So, it is x varies from 1 and 2, this portion y equal to 2 root x is the whole blue one as you see in the picture, but we are interested only in this arc which is revolve around x axis to obtain this uh, surface which is painted green here. So, now we want to find the surface area. So, here of course, we will be using the formula, but first let us see what is the function it is y equal to 2 root x. So, we need the derivative derivative is 1 divided by root x right it is x to the power half. So, it is half x to the power minus half and there is a 2. So, that cancels you get 1 divided by square root of x. So, 1 plus y prime square is 1 plus 1 by x square root. Then the surface area will be 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y prime square dx fine. So, once you take this this y really is your r that comes to here is the r right the radius of the uh, frustrum 2 radii are there. So, we are taking the average one. So, that corresponds to this y here. So, it is integral 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y prime square dx where x varies from 1 to 2 that is the curve is given as x varies from 1 to 2. So, now it is a matter of integrating it and we know that 1 plus y prime square equal to 1 plus 1 by x and we have a square root. So, it is 2 pi 
and y equal to 2 root x. So, 2 root x square root of 1 plus 1 by x dx. Fine. So, you multiply that x taking it inside the square root that give you x plus 1 square root and this simplifies to 4 pi. So, it is integral 1 to 2 4 pi square root of x plus 1 dx. Now, you can integrate it taking thinking of x plus 1 as u and then it is u to the power half. right? So, that gives to uh, 2 by 3 x plus 1 to the power 3 by 2 integral of square root of x plus 1 we have a 4 pi factor and it is to be evaluated at 1 and 2 and then subtracted out and if you simplify that gives you 8 pi by 3 times 3 root 3 minus 2 root 2 that is the surface area of revolution. So, this happens when we are revolving a curve about x axis. Now, suppose we revolve around y axis. So, let us take the second example. Here we want to find the area of the surface generated by revolving the arc of the curve y equal to 1 plus x square divided by 2. And what is that arc? The arc is described when you take x lying between half and 1. So, that corresponds to this blue one here which is depicted in the picture. So, and that is uh, revolve around uh, y axis. right? So, about y axis we are now revolving. So, you get the picture this way. Fine. So, then we need to express x in terms of y and here of course, it is lying above the uh, in the upper half of the plane. So, when you take x in terms of y, it will be y uh, 2y minus 1 square root. right? So, it is say x equal to x of y which is square root of 2y minus 1 x greater than 0. Okay? It is half to 1. So, it is x greater than 0. Therefore, we get x equal to square root of 2y minus 1 as the curve. And when x has the limit half to 1, our integral will involve limits in y. So, we have to find out limits for y. Fine? So, from this if you find x substitute x equal to half x equal to 1, you get the limits for y as 5 by 8 to 1. So, now y varies from 5 by 8 to 1, x is a function of uh, y now, say g of y and we want to find the surface of uh, area of surface of revolution when the curve is revolved about y axis. So, it will be equal to uh, integral 5 by 8 to 1 2 pi g of y which is square root of 2 y minus 1 and this expression we have to see it is square root of 1 plus g prime y square. right? So, g prime means x prime with respect to y it has to be differentiated. So, x is square root of 2 y minus 1. So, x prime is dx by dy which is 1 divided by square root of 2 y minus 1. So, that half cancels with this 2 when you differentiate with respect to y first with respect to 2 y next 2 y with respect to y. So, 1 2 comes that is cancelled. So, it is 1 divided by square root of 2 y minus 1. Therefore, the surface area will be integral 5 by 8 to 1 2 pi g of y which is square root of 2 y minus 1 square root of 1 plus x prime square which is 1 divided by 2 y minus 1. So, now multiplying this 2 y minus 1 inside this under root we get 2 pi root 2 y to the power half dy and if you integrate it is 2 pi root 2 that is 2 root 2 pi times y to the power half gives 2 by 3 y to the power 3 by 2 evaluated at 5 by 8 and 1 and that simplifies to this number which is pi divided by 12 into 16 root 2 minus 5 root 5. So, this comes when you have the uh, it is a curve is revolving about the y axis where x is a function of y.